okay so this is the time to debug our code and see how transaction is signed and verified so let's go ahead and set the breakpoint here in the run module and go to blockchain and start debug okay let it start and uh, let me open up the browser okay our front end is started so let me sh okay so let's create a transaction from this address to this address try sending 10 bitcoins and send okay so it has stopped at our breakpoint let's go inside the prepare transaction function and let's see what's happening there go inside the prepare transaction input okay so empty list is created total is set to zero and we are creating the script public key and uh, we are getting the public key hash so here we are converting our shared utxo into local utxo by using the dict keyword and let's go ahead and do that so it will convert it into new utxo we would be able to see the utxo so these are all unspent transactions you can see it is continuously mining and it is adding the unspent transactions into utxo and we have already shared this utxo with our run module and you can see that in our blockchain file so we transferred our utxos here right here and now it is able to share the data between even though it is running in a separate process and that's why we use the multi-processing it is possible that if this dictionary is in use so it may not be able to convert it so it should wait for two seconds and then retry so let's jump to the next step so now read the data from our new utxo so we transferred 10 bitcoins here it is checking that if those transactions are locked to our public key hash if they are locked so it will go inside the loop and it will add the total and total is i think it's uh, 50 bitcoins and we just transfer 10 so it has created the transaction id and now it will create the transaction input object here and append it in the list and again it will check if the total is less than the amount that we are transferring then it will go inside the loop but i think we just transfer 10 bitcoins and we already have the 50 bitcoins so we don't need to further check any other transactions so it should come out of the loop if balance is enough true this condition is also okay and then it will return the transaction input list and it will check this flag so it should go inside the loop only if we have the enough balance in this case we have the enough balance and now prepare the transaction output to whom we are sending the coins it should log the bitcoins to the person's public key hash to whom we are sending the coins and go inside this okay so we are getting the public key hash so we have the script public key here and the coins are locked to this public key hash and these are the opcodes when we will verify the transaction uh, input so create the transaction output object amount and the script public key and this is the fee that we are transferring we are paying one bitcoin and then finally we are sending the change amount back to ourselves and creating another transaction output object and appending it in the list and now we have two transaction outputs so let's look at this and you can see we have two transactions first we are sending to the person second the change amount we are sending back to ourselves and now let's create the transaction so we have the transaction and now it will create the transaction id and this is the time to sign our transaction so let's sign get our private key we have the private key it fetched the private key from the file the account file and here it is creating the object for our private key and 
we are calling the input object function sign input let's go inside this function and we are creating the z which is our script signature and it should create the signature and we have it so let's see the value of z so this is the numeric value then we are creating the signature the uh, signature and then the final signature by adding the hash type which is sig hash all and this is our final signature and this is our public key which we are creating from the private key and finally we are adding the signature inside our transaction input that we are signing so it has the signature and the public key and with that we have signed the transaction if there are multiple transactions so it will sign all those transactions in a loop so i think we have only one and that's it now it is returning the transaction object so let's go back and we have the transaction object here and you will see inside the transaction input we should have the script signature now and there are two elements the first one is the signature and second one is our public key all right so let's verify our transaction now okay so we are checking if it is the object type is transaction and uh, let's verify the transaction so we are telling that for which index input we are verifying it and we are passing the script public key to verify the transaction so let's go inside the verify input it is getting the object and here it is getting the z okay we have z which is similar to the one when we notice that when we sign the transaction and here we are combining the script signature and the script public key and then we are finally evaluating our signature so let's go inside this and let's see the commands that we have so we have all these uh, commands so first one is the signature this is the public key and then these are the operation codes we will see it in action now and then this is the script public key hash and uh, then these are op codes as well so let's see first it will pop the first element from the stack and let's see which one is that that is signature and its type is not input so it should add and go inside the else and add it on the stack right now stack must be empty so it is empty and let's see it now and we have the first element on the stack which is the script signature now the second element is as well the public key hash let's see it yeah that's the public key hash and it will add that as well on the stack it's not the public key hash but it's the public key itself so it will add that on the stack as well and the next element is opcode which is 118 and now it should go inside this loop it will fetch the function definition from this function you can see that it has the function object here op dupe 118 so now we will have the definition of this function and let's go inside the operation yeah i see one error here actually it should be else if not if and let's go inside it now it should duplicate the element from the stack so right now we have uh, two elements on the stack so it it will duplicate the last element from the stack and let's do it and it is fetching the last element and adding it back to stack by append statement so let's do that and now we have i see okay so another error that we noticed it it should have returned true from there and i see in the op underscore dupe we did not return true and that's the reason it is going inside this uh, error loop so let's fix both the issues the first one we need to add else if here and the second one inside the op uh, underscore dupe we need to return true so let's return true from here return true 
and also add else and save it less and the script and run it again blockchain run and debug let's bring up our front end again okay so let's transfer it again from the same address to this address and this time let's transfer 100 coins or 90 coins so we should have two transaction inputs now so it is already here so i'm not gonna run through everything again so we'll directly go to the error where we face the error so transaction okay transaction object is prepared let's see the transaction inputs we have this time and you can see we have two transaction inputs this time because we transferred 90 and uh, the maximum bitcoins in one transaction is only 50 so that's the reason we have two transactions and both should have these script signatures i can see it here it has the script signature and the transaction 2 should also have the script signature and i can see it here so both has this script signature now let's directly verify the transaction and let's verify the first transaction first index zero and script public key this let's go inside the verify input skip all this we have already seen that go directly inside the evaluate function and first signatures were added and then the script uh, public key is added and we have the operation now to duplicate it and now it should not go inside the error and perfect it didn't go inside the error and the next is let's see what is there in the command 169 again it's the op code so that means we need to perform some some kind of action here so let's see what is op code so it's hash 160 so we need to perform the hash so let's see go inside the function and it is popping the element from the stack and it will run the hash 160 on this and append it on the stack and return true so now let's see what we have it on the stack so we have this element on the stack and let's see what is the next element so this is the public key hash so it should add it on the stack okay and the next is the op code which is equal verify so it will verify the hash so let's go inside and see what exactly it is doing here equal verify let's go inside the op equal first it is checking if there are at least two elements on the stack and it is popping up the first element and the second element and then it is comparing both the elements if both the elements are same then it is a success and it will append one on the stack and it has appended one return true and second one is equal verify so let's verify that it is checking if the element on the stack is one if it is one then fine that we have verified successfully otherwise it should return false if it is zero okay equal verify is done and let's see the next operation the next operation is check signature and this is the main signature to verify the signature and we are passing the stack and z which is our signature hash so go inside it so first it is fetching the public key then signature it is excluding the last element of the signature because um, which is the signature hash type and we don't need it when evaluating the signature go inside this and it is passing the public key and then signature and finally it is verifying the signature if signature is verified it will append one on the stack 
so hopefully it will verify and yes it verified the signature so that means our transaction is good and return true and it will do the same thing for the second uh, transaction that we have we have two transactions here so let's do it directly run the verify input function and yes it has verified the second transaction as well because it did not uh, go inside the uh, loop so that means both the transactions are verified and now it will add the transaction in our memory pool and cool so our transaction is verified successfully now it should display the message on the front end and let's see it and we can see the message here transaction added in memory pool in the next uh, session we will see how to read those transactions from the memory pool and add them in the block